Hi everyone, it's Troy from Complete Health Geelong here. Um, I'm just going to go into a bit of a talk, not not into great detail. I'm not going to go into the um, diagnostic criteria or anything like that into CPTSD um, and PTSD. I'm just going to do a brief overview um, of an easy way of explaining it so you know what it is and some things of what it isn't. So if we go over to the board... This is what a brain looks like with PTSD. It is one big traumatic event. Um, the easiest way to sort of explain it is, you know, um, someone's in war and the Humvee gets blown up by a grenade or an IED or whatever they're called. Um, it was out of their control. The situation, they had absolutely no control over it. It scared them. Boom. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, before, before I go on to this dude, it's important to note that um, recent studies have shown that not everybody that goes through an experience like that gets PTSD or CPTSD. There is actually a gene that makes you more susceptible to getting PTSD and CPTSD. Um, some people like to call it the empathic gene, but um, I'm not going to go down that route. Um, now, in saying that, not everybody with this gene ends up with PTSD or CPTSD. This is where the environment comes into play. If somebody's brought up, you know, 100% correctly, which nearly nobody is, um, the chances of them getting these two are very slim. If somebody has been brought up with Neglect. Now, this isn't always the case either, but more so if you've been neglected in some way, some of your needs haven't been met. Um, and I'll go into the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in another video. Um, you're more likely to get CPTSD and PTSD if you've been neglected. Just from my experience, this, is, this isn't in any anything that I've read. Um, whereas if you've got the same thing, but you tend to have been abused more than neglected, usually that will turn into more of like a borderline or a narcissism thing. Again, that, that is just my opinion, um, just from all the work I've done and, and stuff like that. I've never actually seen anything to say any, to um, agree with that. So this guy, now we did limiting beliefs in another video. So some of these will part of that limiting belief. So under all this, you've got that I'm not good enough thing still going on. So that I'm still good enough not running running around in there. And then, you know, a few things happen. You have a couple of bad relationships. That's another thing. CPTSD is interpersonal. So it's relational. It doesn't have to be a partner. It could be a parent. It usually starts with a parent. There's a reason you're with a narcissist. Um, chances are your parent was a narcissist or a borderline or a person suffering CPTSD as well. Um, you know, you go to what's comfortable, what feels like home. And for us codependents or people with CPTSD, well, that feels like home. So again, that's the mummy issues, daddy issues all coming into play from the codependency side of things. But for now, let's just concentrate on this. So let's say You've had a heap of things happen in your life that you feel that you've had no control over. This control thing is very important. It's not talked about enough. So again, the CPTSD, no control over it. If that same guy was playing with one of those bombs at home and, I don't know, blew up his own letterbox for fun, he probably wouldn't have got scared. But when he was in the Humvee and it blew up, he had no control over it, got scared, traumatic experience. The same thing here is when you're in relationships that you feel that you can't get out of, and that's the important part, you feel you can't get out of. We know that with abusive people, they they gaslight, um, they manipulate, um, they stand over. Um, it's essentially Stockholm Syndrome. So um, you feel like you can't get out. You can but that's not the important part. It's the same as the PTSD. You don't feel you're in control. And even though you you can, you believe that you can't. 
you know, um, oh, I can't live without, without this person. I bet you, you know, if you're watching this video, you've probably said that. You've probably said that a lot of times. Um, and you can because you're doing it now. So the same as them limiting, limiting beliefs, how I took the, the legs off the table and replaced them with good legs. So that way the foundation of the house is strong. So that way you'll have a good house. It's the same thing we have to do here. We have to take out these one at a time and they'll clear up. If you have all these red dots, like a narcissist will, someone with CTSD will, borderlines will, um, people with codependency, when they find out, um, they're just as manipulative as somebody with narcissism. Um, it's a, it's a, an awakening moment, <laughs> to say the least. I remember my exact moment. Um, we are very good at manipulating people. We don't realize we're doing it at the time, but we're just as bad as them. The reason for this is because you're trying to get those knees met. So you're bouncing around all these traumas trying to get needs met over and over and over. And you're doing that to try and stay safe. And it's all out of survival mode. Again, I'll go into that in another video. Um, you're living out of um, the limbic part of your brain, the monkey brain, the lizard brain, uh, depending on what religions and stuff that you're into um, or philosophies. So if you've got all these dots, you, you won't, you probably won't have them at the start. So these are going all throughout your life. Now you've had the straw on the camel's back. You've had the, the relationship with the narcissist. That's broken you down to that core level. So they've instigated the PTSD in you now. Now I'm a, I'm a firm believer you can't have one without the other. If you've got CPTSD, you've got PTSD and vice versa. Um, again, that's just being looked at now. Some agree, some don't. But when you look at it like this, it's pretty simple. Red dot, red dot, you know. <laughs> um, and I know that I had visual flashbacks. They associate emotional flashbacks only with CPTSD and visual flashbacks only to PTSD. I don't agree. And from personal experience, I had both. Um, but as we start clearing these dots up, these traumas up, Eventually, they will lessen, they will go, they will be more manageable, and you won't feel the need to manipulate. You won't feel the need to be dishonest. Now, a lot of us um, codependents uh, will like to think that we're, especially people who are still using the term empath, you're not an empath, you're an unhealed codependent, um, and you probably lie you don't like to admit that you do but you probably do um because us codependents like to think that we're holier than they are just out there helping everybody when really we're helping people to get our own needs met this changes once you do the work um it's a very very hard pill to swallow at the start um but again this is more codependency sort of base but cftsd and that it's all on the same line so um i like to cross them over so as we work through these, you obviously don't need as much as of this black line. You don't need any of that anymore. All your um, anxiety, depression, and all that will start to go because you, you probably never really had that bad of depression or anxiety um, before the, the big bang. So usually what will happen is you, you go through all your life with CPTSD but then you'll have, if you're watching this video, you've probably had a big break. Something has happened. Some, it'll prob probably, in the space of one or two years, you've had three to four pretty pretty big, significant um, changes in your life. Um, and you're probably watching rock, you're hitting rock bottom. Because usually when you realize you've got CPTSD, you've hit the rock bottom. And that's when you know you've got to start changing things. So, and usually... It's a narcissistic relationship. Um, and these these will also be using addictions. The, the correlation between addictions and complex trauma. Uh, they say not everybody with complex trauma is an addict. 
but every addict has complex trauma. Complex trauma equates to, so it's not CPTSD or PTSD until you've had them big moments that have kicked in the PTSD, the CPTSD. Until then, it's sort of complex trauma. They all sort of merge and they're all on a line. Now, I'm going to go into that in detail in other videos because that's a pretty big thing how it's all a spectrum. They're all spectrum disorders. They're up there with the ADHD, the narcissism, the borderline. They're all on a spectrum and CPTSD is in there with them. Um, CPTSD is not in the DSM-5, the, diagnos the Diagnostic um, Journal. Um, at one point, they were thinking about merging borderline and CPTSD. They're not now. Um, they're that similar. So if you have this and you've been Googling it, which you probably have, you're probably thinking you're a borderline. The The differences are pretty pretty slim, uh, but there are differences. You, you've probably asked yourself if you're a narcissist, but it's the underlying reasons for you doing things. The same um, coping mechanisms are there, the same behaviours are there, um, but the underlying reasons are there. People with CPTSD and codependency are usually more like, I'm going to help you to make you love me because I'm scared you're going to leave. That sort of thing where an abusive person like a narcissist is just using you to get um, what they want. And they, they don't want you to leave, so they're trying to make you weak and vulnerable so that you don't leave. So essentially, it's both manipulation um, but and just because one's helping doesn't make it right. Um, in the start of your journey, you're probably thinking, yeah, but I, I always just do it to help people. Yeah, but that doesn't make it right. You're still imposing your will on somebody else, which is what the narcissist did to you, which is why you end up with the CPTSD and PTSD. It's, it's, it's really no different. So I hope this clears a, a lot of it up for you, um, for what it is and what it isn't. And um, like I said, I will be going into it in a lot more detail because, again, these are just simple diagrams so that you can get a really good grasp on it um, without going into all the um, clinical stuff and and that, and that side of it. It's just it's just to give you a, a bit of peace of mind and um, stop you over analysing everything to hell because I know if you've got this, that's probably what you're doing. Um, yeah, so try and breathe relax, and um, chill out for a little bit. Catch you later. Hi, everyone. As soon as I hit the stop button, um, I realized that there's a, a couple of extra things that I did want to say. Um, the first one being, when I say we lie, I mean we're very good at manipulating. Like, we'll manipulate people into giving us the response that we want. It's a way of keeping safe. Now, you'll know that you do this. You'll um, steer conversations in the direction that you'd like them to go. Um, so I don't mean like blatantly lie, although some of us do that too. Um, and when I was talking about the DSM-5 and it not being in there yet, um, complex trauma and CPTSD is relatively, or codependency, it's all relatively new stuff. So there's still... Um, doing a lot of research on it at the moment. Um, it's really been only oh, big in the last five five years to now getting big two years. So um, I think it should definitely be in there. And the other thing I wanted to say is CPTSD and PTSD, they're usually comorbid. And comorbid means in conjunction with, basically. Um, so usually if you have CPTSD and PTSD, um, there's a pretty high likely chance that you also have depression and anxiety or de depressed mood, which is different than um, than depression, but there's a good chance that you, you have that and something. Same as borderline. Borderline will usually always have that plus something. Um, yeah, so I really hope that clears some stuff up for you.